me. It was, it was really, um, well, it was a lot of stress at the time because the star system was such that you had to work under tremendous pressure. There was so much um, emphasis put on the look, on the image. Uh, they never really cared about what you were inside. It was as long as you projected the right image, and that usually meant uh, how much lipstick, how you wore your hair, things like that. And you, there was such a need to always want to express yourself and be yourself, but it wasn't, uh, wasn't the time. Of course, you came under the wing, if that's the right word, of Harry Cohn, who's either described as a mogul or a monster, whichever uh, way you look at him. But he was one of the, the, the last great impresarios, wasn't he, of uh, picking out stars like yourself and, and making them in his image. He saw you, it said, as a replacement for Rita Hayworth, is that right? I think the story got changed around a little bit, a little bit exaggerated. Um, there was always a, a number of people that were being built and, and groomed for stardom, you know, and uh, I think at the time we had about 10 girls and about eight men, Jack Lemmon was one of them, being groomed, and a couple of us made it in that group. Uh, I don't think it was really a matter of trying to take Rita Hayworth's place, but he was. He was a strange man, but there was a lot to say for him, really. When you think about it, when I look back, I mean, he put the fear of God in me. He was terrifying, really? really. Oh, God. To walk in his office and to see, he just, and he was so, um, well, he was uh, like, like a big gorilla, like King Kong, really. But on the other hand, he knew his business. He knew what he wanted. He knew the kind of films that should be made, and he knew how to get his results, and mostly by putting fear into people, really. Mm. I mean, he did like to work with fear as his main, uh, mm. his main hold over everybody. Mm. Did he want to change you physically? Did he? Well, yes, that. In other words, there was always formulas. They felt, well, this worked, that worked. Let's, let's put it together. In fact, when they sent me to the makeup room at the studio the first time, and I sat in the makeup chair, and he looked at me, uh, not, not trying to see what features I had that might be good in bringing out, but he looked and he thought, well, now let's see, let's try a Joan Crawford mouth and a, this one's uh, Marilyn Monroe hair and, you know, and all the different, and he put it all together. And it, at, by the time you got out of the chair, you were so insecure because I looked in the mirror, it was absolutely frightening. I didn't look at all like myself. <laughs> so there was constantly um, a little bit of uh, rebellion, I suppose, but I didn't do it outwardly because I felt well, they were experts, and I didn't really want to say anything too much, but I'd go in the back in the dressing room and rub off the lipstick and try to compromise, put on something a little different. But it was mostly the look that they tried to change. Mm. and pinned at the neck. I told her that. I told you that. We tried it. It just didn't seem to suit me. Please, Judy. You, you gained a reputation, did you not? I know this is a hearsay, but it's what I read, that for being quite difficult on one or two movies in, in this time in Hollywood. Was that because you were trying to assert yourself, that you were trying to I, say, I don't want any of this? I think, to a large degree, they got very upset when I would smear off the lipstick and redo my hair. But not only that, yes, they, they would mind if you would try to s discuss how you wanted to play the role. I mean, after all, it was not just the fact that they were the boss, but at that time, it was, there was less rights for women as well, in the sense that, I mean, it was enough being, trying to say what you want, yet alone being a woman, saying it. I would always want to discuss it and see, try to bring in my own self, if I could, to a part. Mm. I felt I had something to offer in, in my own way.